Ugh. How I wish I could kill you. A Hashira? Worth of my time to kill. Daki had proclaimed in a fit of rage and frustration. Yen was getting tired of bickering with the young demoness. All right, you decide how would you like to die, as I have other things to, that need to, need my attention, Yen asked, yet this only made the demoness more angry. Suddenly, a look of fear came onto her face. Oh no, he's close. Please just listen, the demon suddenly pleaded. He... Had she had a way of receiving internal information from afar that would explain how she never got caught by Tengen? Who's coming? Yin questioned, conf confused at the sudden look of fear on the upper moon. That question had almost instantly seemed to answer itself as suddenly in a deserted alleyway under the, the palm moonlight, a tall figure was standing behind her. It seemed as if a long, slender hand had clasped a beautiful glittered fan in front of half of the figure's face. Ah, it, so it is true. The Hashira lives. An empathetic voice cooed, making the young demoness cover, oh, cower before stepping aside. This allowed the tall figure to make full eye contact with the Hashira. Upper moon, too. What do you want, Doma? Yin had asked in a fam to the familiar demon, preparing her stance to swing her sword at him. Oh, dear Yin, you must, must you always be so hostile? The demon responded, a bored expression hand landing on his face, his eyes slightly rolling. Yin had no time for the psych psychotic demon's games, and she especially had not planned on facing Muzan this early. Or had she? Perhaps... This was a window of opportunity she had been expecting, so she decided. She would simply submit to the enemy. Keep your friends close, but your enemies closer, right? Yin had turned to her left to look at the frightened demoness, trying to her best to remain out of her higher-ranked demon's way. Perhaps there was a darker history bet between the two that Yin would try understand later. You've become quite the topic of conversation lately, as well as a big part of his plan. So, accompany me with no casualties. We'll have to suffer. Doma had in encouraged the Hashira. What if I choose not to? Yin asked, trying to create a sense of defense. Meanwhile, that was the to total opposite of her actual plan. Well... Then he'll just have to come to get you himself. And we both know he wouldn't be so pleased about that, dear. The demon teased, lacing his words with, with psychopathic empathy. Typical of a demon of his sorts, it made Daki cover her mouth with fear, knowing the great disappointment he would have in her only to find out. She wouldn't com complete such an under... under Dained task. If I have no choice, the Hashira said, seemingly corroborating, making Daki angry, as how easily she hadn't challenged Doma's strength. Ex oh god, my voice just broke. Excellent, the demon said, satisfying, but he couldn't shake the feeling that it wouldn't be so also so sailing. All right, I must do something first. Yin had started walking past the two demons toward the house. She West, she best being host in Doma, was soon to follow after, but before whispering in Daki's ear, we'll talk about this later, just you and I, making her sniff and wide eyes, making, knowing she messed up. Yin, meet, uh, oh shit, Yin, meet me here in a few minutes. If not, then I'll personally come looking for you, he said with an empathetic, sadistic tone. Just as she got into her house, she decided that if she was going to fool the demon once again, she'd fully convincing, allowing no room for error or doubt to enter Kibuchiji's thoughts. So, if she had to win him over, why not make her life less difficult? Yen ran outside, dashed to her room, and quickly changed into an extravagant kimono. If her looks had proven to aid her in the past, 
she might as well take advantage of it. The kimono had deep purple rim that fell off her shoulders, more modern than normal kimonos, and had a deep black body lace with gold accessories and patterns to suit her figure and make her look extravagant. One would pass her as an oiron if she had the full makeup. She quickly brushed through her hair and... Oh my god. Disheveled. Just... Oh my god. Adjust her jewelry hair band and adorned her hair with more golden and red pins. Now she was... She was really did look magnificent. She made sure to leave her not only train zone behind. She had another plan that would that didn't re require one. Yin walked out of the house, past the several men who begged her for attention. She was heading in the direction of the alleyway she and Doma confronted each other in. After a few turns and twists, she saw that Daki was nowhere in sight. Strange. She did, however, see the tall and slender man le leaning against the old brick wall, residing s oh, resentfully swaying his fan back and forth in a small motion. The sadistic smile passed onto his face and said enough to snap his fan shut. This, this, and startled, oh, started slowly clapping while making his way towards the girl. My, don't you look quite beautiful this evening, hmm? He hummed, setting her features up and down, making sure he fully analyzed her stance and made it easy to predict future moves or attacks at this Hashira's side. Doma noted, motioned for her to stand closer to him, his rainbow eyes staring deep into hers. She moved closer and took, as he took her waist. Suddenly, they were in a very familiar yet confusing space, the Infinity Fortress, Lust Castle. Yin took a deep breath. She could feel her heart racing, but she knew very well that she had to s stick to this plan, even if it cost her her own life. They were n now on a platform in a dimly lit space. Above them, a bigger platform stood with a red capuchin platform with a small wooden vents similar to similar to what she previously seen a biwa playing demon sit on, except this one was made much more lavish with thick and plump red gold and black columns facing a staircase leading down to the upper moon and yin against the the I'm going to call it kashramins there he sat leaning his palms on a and clutching his fist on his right hand muzan kibutsu ji muzan sama it seems that doki has some trouble completing her, your task, so I aided her to benefit your uh, schedule. I'll be sure to deal with her later. Doma had proudly started, suddenly dragging Yin down to the floor with him to kneel to, uh, to a kneeled bow. Doma, I advise for the sec security of your head that you do not in interfere with the task that I assigned. Surely you are aware of more invaluable things your time could be spent on, such as min maintain priority. Of course, Master, but I'm sure that she is a priority, and hopefully I haven't fed the doubt in your, my abilities. The demon coiled, asked, looking up at Muzan, knowing that how his amusement had revealed to fearing Muzan argued him. Leave, Muzan had ordered. Suddenly making the demon vanish almost instantly, Yin was still kneeled close to the floor of the platform she had been on.